When US President Joe Biden took office in January, he vowed to overhaul the Trump era immigration policies, especially when it comes to addressing the issue of 11 million undocumented immigrants already living in the United States. On the forefront of that fight, representing the Korean American community, is activist Kim Jong un, who works with the National Korean American Service and Education Consortium and has led a campaign called Citizenship for All. He joins us now uh, on the line for this week's Touch Base and Soul. Welcome to the show, Mr. Kim. Hi, thanks for having me. Can you first tell our listeners a little bit more about yourself? Uh, how did you get involved in working for immigrant rights? Well, it's very personal to me because um, I'm a DACA recipient and also undocumented uh, immigrant uh, living in the United States. So I came to the United States when I was 15 from South Korea. I would say South side of Korea. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and it was kind of personal struggle for me because um, I was having a hard time to go to college because of my immigration status. Mm. Because all of my friends, uh, I applied to college like, like my friends apply. And even though I got accepted because of my immigration status, I wasn't able to attend the class. Um, and I would try to find a way to go to school and I was able to find a NACASEC and because they provide free legal services, which is they decided to help me out to, I wouldn't say sue the college, but um, because back then, still though, uh, the California passed the legislation called AB 540, which is they're allowed um, undocumented students um, um, can apply uh, in state tuition, mm. just like a citizen, even mm. if even if the student is undocumented. Um, so, uh, um, Nakasa helped me out to apply for that uh, program, and um, that's how I was able to go to school and able to finish the school. Um, after that, after finished my school, I got my DACA and then I wanted to find a way to give back, you know, uh, because I see there's so many undocumented immigrants living in this United States, just like, just like I, just, just like me. So there's, there are 11 million documents immigrants out of 11 million. There are, um, 2 million Asian Americans who are mm -hmm. undocumented and also there are like, uh, among DACA recipients. Uh, Korean Americans, second most, uh, yeah, DACA recipients holders right. uh, among all the DACA recipients. Of, yeah, in the Asians um, category. Sure. And then after college, you felt like you wanted to give back. And so you started working with NACASEC and then you ended up becoming the organizing director, I understand. And then mm -hmm. since then, you've also been working on this Citizenship for All campaign. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so, well, and after I graduate school and I apply, because there is a program like called DACA, I already say, but it's like it's called Deferred Action Child for Arrival. Mm. Uh, it, it, that's the program um, initiated by Obama under Obama administration, so, which is in 20, 2012. Mm. Um, 2012. Um, which is like if you are undocumented immigrant, however, if you graduate high school, if you came like 15 years old, then um, they allow you to um, apply for um, social security car and a work permit mm. for two years. Um, so cool. That's why it's also temporary protection from deportations. Right, right. And this is um, primarily yeah, aimed at that. younger children. Uh, b below right. 18, uh, but it ignored all the people who are above 18, who are adults who had already been working in the US, I understand. Oh, not really. You can still apply um, um, over 18, mm. yes. However, um, you cannot apply it if you came to the United States over 16. Right, okay. So you have to be in the United States, yeah, under 15, mm. um, in order for you to be eligible to uh, apply for it. There's uh, so many Korean Americans 
uh, are in that program. Uh, we are second highest uh, among Asian Americans um, who receive uh, apply for the DACA, DACA program. Mm. So basically, after that, I got I got DACA, and I try to work, you know, a um, few different places, and I decided to work as a full time organizer, <clears throat> community organizer, with Nakasek right after. I mean, during the time that right after I would say the Trump was elected, mm. I mean, like one month, it was October 2016, so month before the mm. election. Right. Um, and because um, one of his promise was um, getting away the DACA and also DACA program and also uh, a lot of anti immigrant. Um, um agenda he was trying to push for mm. so i thought um uh protecting my right and also my community rights uh must be the priority um it must have been difficult anything. it must have been difficult for you to uh campaign at that time because uh the government were being so hostile uh towards uh undocumented immigrants and the whole situation mm -hmm. so you were fighting against a lot it seems right right um not only that like i remember that like uh, a lot of his agenda uh was um really directly towards um people who are most vulnerable right who are undocumented who are muslim who are women who are black you know um so i remember that like um right after he he repealed um the daca program um and there was a time like um i remember like because it's like um, daca is not permanent uh, solution mm. you know it's mm. only the program that sure uh, allow young people to just stay and work mm. for, for a couple of years but yeah i feel like he he doesn't have any hurt you know um mm. Mm. And yeah, well, now that the feel. now that the Biden administration has come in, it must uh, give you hope. You must be uh, uh, working towards a lot and hoping that things can change now. Mm, yes and no. Yes and no. I would say um, be because I mean, whether it's Democrat or Republican, right? I mean, this just. I would say most of the time, because I, even under Obama administration, 2008 to 2016, right? Um, he promised a lot of stuff. Uh, he promised for Dream Act. He want to pass the Dream Act, and it's a comprehensive immigration reform. But none of that uh, has happened because mm -hmm. none of that uh, was passed. No, the bill was passed because um, he didn't take uh, the immigration as his priority. So I think the Biden administration is not much different, but I, uh, compared to Obama administration, because he was part of the Obama administration, he was mm -hmm. the vice president. That's why we decided to do this hundred-day campaign to pressure the Biden administration to keep his promise and um, hold them accountable. Mm. Um, Can because, you tell us about he that promised that, now? Yeah, because he promised that um, he will pass or introduce uh, the immigration bill will allow um, the legalized 11 million document immigrants um, mm. from day one. Mm. And we want to make sure that he kept his promise um, and make sure that he is becomes our champion. Uh, to drive those bill um, for um, not only the Senate and the House, because if you look at it, um, House and Senate and in uh, the White House all under the Democrat, right? Democratic mm. Party, which is Democrat tri trifecta, is one of the rare opportunity we have. Mm. Um, yeah, so we really want him to play the champion. Right. So the aim is uh, for you to. Uh, 
pressure the Biden administration to pass a bill on immigration, uh, allowing a path uh, towards a citizenship for undocumented uh, immigrants. And you want to do that uh, within the hundred. Uh, first hundred days of the Biden administration, and that is the part of the campaign you are currently working on. So, we wish you luck on that. After that hundred days, though, what's your plan? What's the plan for the next hundred days? Mm, honestly, personally, like I wish, I, I really wish we can pass something, pass some mm. bills, so I can apply for my citizenship. Within hundred right. days, uh, that's why I'm here for. That's why I'm in DC doing everything I can, um, um, pushing for uh, the legalizations mm. for under for all 11 million document immigrants. So that's why we're doing. Um, it's called farm dogging, which is like. Uh, the bar dogging is, is 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 something that we used to do uh, when the Congress and Capitol was open. Mm. Uh, we go to their office and um, just follow the legislator wherever they go and ask them uh, the the questions that we want to ask and also demand our demands. Mm. Um, however, because of the pandemic and all that, they closed. So mm. we, um, yeah, we 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 call every day. The capital and the uh, and the legislator to mm. demand um, demand uh, our, our citizenship, and also we do in person action every day mm. in front of the White House and of the Congress. Um, so um, after hundred days, I really wish I don't have to do this anymore, <laughs> <laughs> so I can go home sure. um, and apply my, for my citizenship. Yeah, well, That's we wish you. Wish. We wish you luck on that campaign and wish you luck on your personal fight as well. We've been speaking to Kim Jong-woo, Organising Director of the National Korean American Service and Education Consortium. Thank you for your time today. Thank you so much. You can apply, you can uh, follow our campaign, Citizenship for the Life. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it.